You're watching the Seafood News Weekly Video, brought to you by Maine Lobster. The rocky coast of Maine is home to one of the most iconic and sustainable fisheries in the world. With 5,600 independent lobstermen from multi-generational families, the Maine Lobster industry is committed to bringing sustainably harvest lobster from trap to table. To learn more about the industry's long history of sustainability, visit lobsterformaine.com. I'm Ryan Doyle. And I'm Pete Iridoy. In today's top story, Massachusetts lawmakers, including Senator Elizabeth Warren, sent a letter to the U.S. Trade Representative urging him to explore new markets for American lobster exports. The new markets could provide relief for lobstermen who are being impacted by the 25% tariffs placed on imported American lobster by China. The lawmaker's letter comes before a joint committee on export development oversight hearing in the Massachusetts State's ha State House to analyze the repercussions of Chinese tariffs on the lobster industry. In response, the trade representative acknowledged the concerns and indicated that trade agreements with countries in Africa and Southeast Asia, along with the U.S. Department of Commerce's Foreign Commercial Service, could aid in mitigating the loss of the Chinese market. Thanks, Pete. In other news, a North Atlantic right whale was found dead earlier this week off of Long Island, New York, making it the ninth of the critically endangered species to be found dead this year. The whale was identified as a 40-year-old male named Snake Eyes. Snake Eyes had been spotted in August and tangled in fishing gear in the Gulf of St. Lawrence. Expected to be one of the great fathers of the population, a senior scientist at the New England Aquarium called the death a tragedy. After a pair of Massachusetts-based organizations perform a necropsy, the cause of death has yet to be released, but entangled is suspected. Thanks, Ryan. In the wake of falling prices for Pangasius standard moisture frozen fillets, low moisture product remained steady for most of the year due to a much tighter supply within the market. Recently, however, prices on this low moisture product, which average about 84% moisture content, have begun to fall. In 2017, the average price difference between low moisture and standard moisture frozen fillets was about 20 cents. Beginning in March 2018, the price difference between the two products grew month over month, reaching $1.15 in August 2019. Currently, a 5 to 7 ounce standard moisture frozen fillet averaged around $2.10 per pound, while the low moisture product of the same size is averaging $2.90 per pound. Check out the September issue of the Aquaculture Insiders Report coming out next week for more insight. And finally, New Zealand Fisheries Minister Stuart Nash announced an ambitious partnership between the government and New Zealand's aquaculture industry to deliver economic growth and jobs as part of an overall aim to make aquaculture a $3 billion industry by 2035. Alongside the $3 billion target goal, the strategy will focus on developing sustainable open ocean and land-based farming, increasing farm efficiency and product value, adopting new technologies, and building resilience to environmental change. And that's the guacamole. I always wanted to say that. That's a good job. This episode of the Seafood News Weekly Recap video was sponsored by our friends at Maine Lobster. Visit lobsterfrommaine.com to learn more. And be sure to head over to seafoodnews.com or visit the Seafood tab in Comtel for a comprehensive look at the latest market and industry news. Thanks for watching.